What is up everyone? We're out here with the Apollo RFN, otherwise known as the Beta Explorer, and we're gonna take you for our first initial test ride. I just got geared up. I'm about ready to hop on this bike and see what it's made of. You're probably wondering, hey Brett, doesn't that bike come to the kickstand? Why is it leaning up against the trailer? Well, the reason for that is the kickstand doesn't have a stopping joint. It's got a little bump stop here that I took off, um, but that bump stop is what holds this kickstand in place, but you can flex it out and then your kickstand has nowhere to go but up. Um, it's a big fear of mine to have something like that happen, so I took it off. That is one flaw that I'm a little bit worried about. What I do like is that this bike has got a proper chain guard. Unlike most bikes, um, you see a lot of bikes toss chains and issues like that. I think that this is going to stay pretty nice. Something kind of wild is it looks like it's got a motocross pivot point, which is non-direct, which requires chain slack, but the truth is, that swing arm is so long that it comes all the way up to where that motor mount is and it is a direct pivot point. So that's pretty unique. Um, pretty worried about that swing arm though because it is flexy. I can grab it. Look at that. I mean, I'm flexing it without even trying. The, uh, the grips, I will say, are horrible. I mean, those, those, are, those are awful to touch. The bars are seven eighths bars. I think the geometry is a little bit off. I feel like if you were to put a front tire on here, um, it would correct things. And I, I just get the feeling I'm gonna sit on this and feel stink bug. So anyway, let's actually throw my leg over it and give you guys a real opinion. All right, so to ready up the bike, you turn it on the key, gives you this display here. And then you have to pull in, I think both of the triggers. And now it says ready. It's in rabbit mode. You can change your modes over here. Rabbit mode is five kilowatts continuous. Then you can have rocket mode, which gives you that 12 and a half, which is what everywhere online says this bike is rated for. It only lasts like 10 seconds. So the actual continuous kilowatts of this bike is five kilowatts. Let's see what it's made of. This is a pretty bumpy road. I am pinned right now, holding the throttle wide open going, I guess, 35 miles per hour up this. Handling it pretty good, though. The only, uh, the only complaints that I have is I am so far over the front of the bike right now. Like, I, I feel like I'm just too crouched down that it's actually making my, my legs work harder. This right here is a pretty decent hill climb to get up to the top. I'm gonna see what a rocket mode will do clicking it into there. Okay, I'm in rocket mode now. Let's see what it's made of. Still in rocket mode. And I think I'm back to the rabbit now. So, I mean, that was less than 10 seconds. I'm full pin trying to make it up this hill. The back end is like <laughs> trying to grab traction everywhere. But it's weird because the rear is flexing so much that like it feels like I've got a flat rear tire and I'm seriously full pin I mean 35 miles per hour isn't that bad but it just feels pretty slow so there's actually quite a bit of snow up here it's like a brisk 45 degrees if that so it's a little bit a little bit chilly but I'm gonna see if I can try to work in some lines and create a little turn track and get something going Oh, those are big ones. <laughs> this bike does better through that than I was expecting it to. It kind of took it like a champ. I just feel like I'm so bent over though that it's hard to really maintain my composure. The suspension's better than I thought though. I have hardly any grip with these stock foot pegs. 
it's so weird that like when I stand when I'm standing up it forces me to be super crouched over but when I actually sit down I'm a lot more like I'm actually sitting pretty straight up my feet are just so far back on the rear end of the bike I wish the foot pegs were a little bit more forward so when I sit down I'm like I mean my toes are pointed nearly straight down when I'm on the front of the bike So, a huge problem for me is because these brake sensors are active, when, I'm, when I hit the brakes and I actually want to be on the throttle at the same time, I can't because it has brake sensors, so it's a bummer. When I go to sit down, I have to widen out my legs a little bit because it gets caught right here. I don't like that at all. I wish that I wish that this is just smooth so that when I go to sit down from a standing position I'm not getting caught up I'm actually getting caught up back here right in there huh. you want to be able to squeeze your bike and not feel any grab points so when I go to sit down into a corner my my feet are so far back and my hands are so far like so low on this bike that all the weight goes forward and because the bike's already tilted kind of stink bug it's a uh, it's hard like it makes the front end want to push and wash out there's a trail ride up here that i guarantee is going to be pretty snowed out but it's a great place to test the traction of these tires and see what i can actually get out of it because so far like yeah it's kind of slick out here but the tire's traction is pretty good. Come into a rock garden. The bike did pretty good. Like it's not deflecting off of things very bad. The rear end though, holy cow, I can feel the, the flex in that swing arm. It's kind of funny because it actually gives you traction in a lot of ways because it's flexing and molding to the ground. But the motocrosser in me does not like that at all. Feels like I've got a flat, feels like my back end's unpredictable. Traction's gonna be a big one here now that we're like kind of in the shades and down in the valley. I'm gonna be riding a trail in the legit snow. It's kind of scary because I know that there's rocks on this trail and they can sneak up and grab me because right now I can't see any of them. But traction wise, like these tires are doing good. For for stock tires and wheels, I mean they're actually really quality. I wish I had a 21 inch up front, maybe a little bit more fork clearance, and then a uh some higher bars I would be probably actually really happy foot pegs could go forward a bit too so the cockpit and the way that the bike is actually stanced that's where it's a little bit a little bit of a bummer I I wish that they would correct a couple geometry things um, just bringing that front end up bringing your feet forward just a bit maybe your center center of gravity a little bit lower because I mean, I've got all the ground clearance in the world where my feet are, but that's forcing me to be so over the top of the bike that having this unpredictable rear end is gonna, gonna concern me a lot if something goes wrong and I'm, you know, I'm trying to push a pace on this bike. And it handles rocks nicely, actually. I think because the rear end is so flexy, it molds to rocks and like kind of keeps you going in the right direction your front end doesn't deflect very much i'm actually really impressed by the front suspension on this bike being stock and this kind of quality that it has i wasn't expecting that all right so this will be a true test of how good the tires are this is muddy slop and just a bunch of rocks and we'll see how maneuverable the bike is 
throughout all this. Oh, that back end flexing is driving me downhill when I don't want to. See, I'm way off camber right there. The back end won't stay where I need it to. But the ground clearance is nice. I'm not hitting rocks and having that issue. Back end flexed so much though it dropped my rear end down instead of holding traction. That was a struggle. Whoa. Yeah, I don't have good traction actually. On other bikes, this is no problem. On this bike, you know what? After I make it through this, I'm gonna show you how an Ultra B handles this terrain. Holy cow, it's so unpredictable. Can't even get my feet on the foot pegs. Because the body stance is so weird. Ah. Okay. <sighs> Brutal. I'm gonna be very short on this bike, but I'm gonna show you the difference of climbing up that ravine versus the, the Beta or the Apollo. Um, a lot of people compare that bike to this bike because it's got that 12.5 kilowatt rating. Once again, the Apollo is five kilowatts continuous. A short burst of maybe 10 seconds um, in that 12 and a half kilowatts um, as that bike sits. So nowhere near the same playing field. Um, this is, definitely a different bike so all of you guys comparing it to this thing it's not in the same class and I'll show you to get into some positives about this bike it is really quite the uh surprisingly good um wheelbase so the bike is decently long which is nice to be able to like go over sand whoops and big rollers and things along those lines i do like this suspension a lot more than i thought i would it, uh, I don't even think I've actually bottomed it out yet, going over a lot of these sand whoops. I think if you were to just correct the cockpit a little bit, like basically do a better foot peg mount, maybe figure out a way to have the swing arm be less flexy, put a 21 inch wheel up front and do handlebars, like real moto handlebars like maybe a high-rise bend this bike is actually pretty epic it's got a lot of good things about it and just some things that i wish they would have executed better and you know 
Who's to say they won't execute it better in the future? Not me. I'd rather, I'd rather think that they're gonna, uh, they're gonna take some words from the community and what they think and improve the bike. Now that I'm like starting to get used to it, I'm actually starting to enjoy it. Doing a couple of laps around this slippery whoop track is actually becoming pretty fun. And yeah, the $4,500 bike. There's a lot of improvements that can be made. So look at how it just tanks those woods. That's pretty awesome. Now that we're picking up some speed, we're learning the bike. Hard to be disappointed at some things and it definitely belongs in the category that it's in. I wish that they would quit marketing it as a 12 and a half kilowatt bike though. It's not. It is the size of a Suron Light B, a Talaria MX4, a longer wheelbase than those two bikes, but it's not a taller one. It's not like the Ultra B or any other competitors in the field, but it is actually a pretty fun bike and pretty stable when it comes to these big whoops even though it's as slippery as it can be right now. So although there are a lot of things that I don't like about it, that's the motocrosser in me. The kid in me who's out here on a little electric bike just trying to have some fun is actually starting to have a lot of fun. Which is really cool. <laughs> Epic. But yeah, even though there's a lot of improvements that can be made, I think if the aftermarket world were to pursue it and make those improvements, this is actually a pretty awesome platform for motocross, trail riding, a lot of different things. A reason I think this bike would be a good platform for the aftermarket world to attack is that it has a good wheelbase it's nice and long eats up whoops it's actually got nice suspension i haven't even bottomed this fork out which is unheard of on these types of bikes and beyond that it's actually got a motocross style and who doesn't love that an electric bike 